Among the different ALK inhibitors, um, we have first generation uh, curzotinib, we have several different second generation inhibitors like seritinib and electinib, and now we even have third generation inhibitors. Among all of those, I would say that seritinib is uh, rather uh, challenging of, uh, of a drug in terms of side effects, and in particular uh, gastrointestinal side effects. What we saw in across all the trials of seritinib is that um, the majority of patients who are treated with the standard dose of seritinib, which is 750 milligrams once a day fasting, will have nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. It was about 80% of patients who experienced these GI side effects. And most of the time, these GI side effects were mild. They were graded as one or two, but there are um, there are a minority of patients who do have more severe GI side effects, um, particularly vomiting and diarrhea. So I think seritinib among all of the ALK inhibitors is probably the most challenging in terms of dealing with the GI side effects. Other common side effects with seritinib include uh, liver function abnormalities, particularly elevated transaminases. Um, so again, I would say the, the risk of having elevated transaminases is even higher with seritinib than with other ALK inhibitors, um, again, using the standard dose of seritinib. Um, there are some other side effects that are worth noting with seritinib, including fatigue, um, abdominal pain, and weight loss. Um, and again, I think many of these side effects all tie back to the GI issues, which are often nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Um, so I think if we, uh, we often very aggressively and proactively manage patients when they are treated with seritinib, uh, meaning uh, prophylaxis with anti-nausea medicines, uh, very aggressive treatment of diarrhea. I would also note that there have been studies now exploring alternative dosing regimens of seritinib because of this toxicity. As I said earlier, the standard dose of seritinib is currently 750 milligrams once daily fasting, but there has now been a report at um, World Lung, uh, the World Lung Cancer Conference this past year um, looking at different doses of seritinib taken with food. And what this study showed, which is called ASCEND-8, is that a lower dose, 450 milligrams of seritinib once a day taken with food, um, seems to give comparable exposures of seritinib in the plasma as the standard 750 milligram once a day fasting dose. And the reason that's important is because we're achieving similar exposure and let, yet what we also see with the lower dose with food is significantly fewer um, GI side effects. So I think going forward, we're very hopeful that Ascend, as we get more data from Ascend 8, that 450 milligrams of seritinib taken with food will be shown to be comparable in terms of exposure as well as efficacy and that will become a new dosing regimen for seritinib and that will make it much more tolerable for patients. At present, when I uh, prescribe seritinib now, I actually am prescribing it at the alternative dosing, which is the 450 milligram once a day dose instead of 750 milligrams once a day. And I do encourage patients to take the, the dose with food. And I find that the lower dose combined with food really helps to mitigate side effects. However, patients can still develop the GI side effects, and so I do have patients monitored very closely in terms of their um, nausea, and particularly in terms of diarrhea. For nausea, we often will use ondansetron or prochlorperazine, um, and sometimes prophylactically even, meaning that we don't wait for the nausea to develop, but knowing that the patient has developed nausea in the past, we will, prior to dosing with seritinib, they will take a prophylactic dose of one of the anti-nausea meds. And for diarrhea, again, just very close monitoring of diarrhea and counseling of patients um, so that they know that they can take anti-diarrheal medications as soon as they have the first episode of diarrhea. Seritinib has been used in the clinic in the past few years. The most important and significant toxicity is the GI toxicity, namely the nausea, vomiting, and the diarrhea. Now, how do I manage it? So, although the label say that you are not supposed to take it with food, but generally, taking a small, small snack may actually temper some of the nausea sensation. So, I usually suggest the patient, if they have the nausea, they should take a small amount of food, either a biscuits or a small sandwich before they take the medication, because some of this GI upset is related to local irritation. 
Some other patients who get significant, continue to a significant nausea and vomiting may require the continuous use of anti emetics such as Odansetron. That may actually help to control. And if it still doesn't work, then we may actually have to reduce the dose. As a matter of fact, for Asian patients, I don't usually start them off at the standard dose of 750. I may start them off at 450 or 600, and only if they were able to tolerate the medication, then I slowly increase the dose for them.